that just sounds comical when Americans say they've got to get gas. Dummy, I think, has negative connotations. The first time I asked my husband for a torch, he asked me if I also wanted a pitchfork. Nothing upsets a British football fan more than hearing their beloved game called soccer. We have chosen 10 words which are different in British and American English. We ask, which word makes the most sense in each instance? The British word or the American word? Please play along and let us know what you think. Oh, and by the way, we do know that a lot of Brits are going to say, well, as we invented the language, the British word should be correct in every instance. <laughs> that aside. <laughs> this video was suggested by my dad, John, from the YouTube channel, John Atkins Lost Norwich. Check out that channel, the link is in the description. Let's kick it off with a contentious one. UK football, US soccer. I think it's the rest of the world football, really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's more or less, yeah. Okay, so Americans, you are in the minority here because it is football. It is football. Let's think about the etymology. Technically, the words football and soccer are both correct. They both describe the same sport, which was codified by the Football Association in 1863, and the words could be considered synonymous. The word soccer is actually a British export and it was used many years before the globalisation of football. Nothing upsets a British football fan more than hearing their beloved game called soccer. By the way, we would call the American game of football American football. Americans, you could call our football game world football. Let's vote. All in favour of soccer? And all in favour of football. I think it makes sense because you play it with your feet. Mm -hmm. And there's a ball. And there's a ball. Mm. The next one is UK dummy, US pacifier. The term dummy may have originated from an article published in 1915 in the British Journal of Nursing Supplement in which a British doctor referred to the pacifiers as dummy teats. Dummy, I think, has negative connotations. Mm, it could be an insult, couldn't mm. it? Okay, let's put it to the vote. All in favour of dummy? All in favour of pacifier. One all! <laughs> UK torch, US flashlight. In the late 13th century, torch came into English from the old French word torch, or twisted thing, which was a piece of wax dipped rope. The first handheld torches were invented by the EverReady company in the 1890s. The first inventions only produced a brief flash of light, hence the name flashlight in America. Knowing that, that does make a lot more sense, doesn't it? Because I was always a bit confused with flashlight. It doesn't mm. really seem to flash. Exactly. If you ask um, an American if they have a torch, they will think that you mean the... Uh, yeah. burning stick or something. And it does make, make Americans giggle. I've, I've fallen mm. into that trap a few times. Yeah. They go, no, it's really cute. Keep going. Because like, I had no idea when I first said it. No. Um, why they were laughing at me. No. The first time I asked my husband for a torch, he asked me if I also wanted a pitchfork. <laughs> okay, let's cast our vote. Okay, all in favour of torch. All in favour of flashlight. I'm sure if we were both Americans sitting here, we would probably choose We probably should have invited some Americans oh, along, shouldn't we? We should have done, Perhaps yeah. you can let us know in the comments section how you would vote Americans and uh, we'll yeah. take your vote into consideration. Exactly. UK toilet, US restroom. The word toilet is French in origin and is derived from the word toilet, which translates as dressing room rather than today's meaning. Originally, a restroom was a room set aside for rest and quiet, maybe in a workplace or in a public building. Later on, these rooms were often required to have accessory toilet rooms. So by the 1930s, the word came to be a euphemism for lavatory or toilet. Well, when I first came to America, we heard about restroom. We just thought it was so hilarious because you don't really go there to have a rest. I think it's interesting because if you ask for the toilet in America, a lot of Americans don't really like that. They think, oh, that's so literal. Like literally mm. the toilet, like ugh. But then it's... Americans are in general with their words more literal than we are sometimes. Yes. Which is strange, isn't it? That yes. they um, poo 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 <laughs> the idea of saying the word toilet. <laughs> Sorry about that part. Oh, that's a good out. I didn't like that action. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. <laughs> Too literal. <laughs> All in favour of restroom. 
all in favour of toilet. Can't be, hasn't it? It's it got makes to be. so much more sense. Yeah, it is what it is. UK ladybird, US ladybug. In British English, the insect is called a ladybird. The English Oxford Dictionary discerns that this insect was referred to as bird because of its ability to fly, and lady in homage to Our Lady, the Virgin Mary. In North America, the insect is primarily referred to as a ladybug. Etymologists widely prefer either ladybird beetle or a lady beetle. Officially, they're not bugs, they're beetles. In the late 1600s, it was also labelled as the lady cow. For some reason, that version didn't stick. I think ladybird is a really cute word and yeah. I, I like it. And it's interesting that Americans dropped the word bird but kept the word lady. Yeah, the lady part they didn't have a problem no. with. It was, it was bird they didn't like. Yes, I can see why it's not literally a bird. No, but, but according to this, it's not literally a bug either. Correct. Just an interesting fun fact. In Norfolk, colloquially, they are called Bishy Barney Bees. Mm, this is Norfolk, England. Oh yeah, not Norfolk, Virginia. <laughs> no. Let's take it to the boat. I haven't said anything about oh, it yet. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, come on, yeah, don't you just cut that bit. <laughs> we just let you talk for ages. <laughs> I don't think I have anything to oh, say well, about it. <laughs> Too much talking. Give it up, I can't ask. <laughs> Like, I'm getting out of here. It came out alright because it just. <laughs> it's sitting on my top like a third nipple. <laughs> you just put that on, please. I can't quite get it. If there was a third option in this boat, I would go Bishy Barney Bee. Okay. Um, but if we have to choose between Ladybird or Ladybug, I think it's going to come down to just what's familiar. Mmm. Let's see what that is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hands up for Ladybird. Hands up for Ladybug. Americans not doing very well. <laughs> I, think, I think most of them are switched off by yeah. now. They're thinking this is such a bias. A bias. We did, we, they have got one point. That is true. And you might get points later on in the game. Yes, don't give up on us. UK, full stop. US, period. Both date from the late 16th century. Period derives from the Latin periodus, meaning a complete sentence. The word period was used as a name for what printers often called the full point, the punctuation mark that was a dot on the baseline and used in several situations. The phrase full stop was only used to refer to the punctuation mark when it was used to terminate a sentence. Oh, Americans, you don't know how funny it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> to us British when you use the word period as if to emphasise something, as in, this video is long, period. <laughs> Here we get a touch of the schoolgirl giggles, don't yeah, we? Yeah, we do. Because it's like saying, I really believe this strongly, a girl's time of the month. <laughs> I think you know which way this one's going to go. Yes, all in favour of full stop. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I can't, sorry, I kind of drifted for a moment. <laughs> I launched into it without her Yeah, I wasn't quite it. ready. I was like zoning there. Yeah. Should we do it again? Okay. All in favour of full stop. All in favour of period. Unanimous again. <laughs> UK jumper, US sweater. The origin has nothing to do with the verb to jump, but comes from the dialect jump, meaning short coat, in sailor's jargon, and possibly from Scottish English jupe, meaning man's loose jacket or tunic. Sweater comes from sweat. The earliest sweaters were worn by rowers and were intended to produce sweating and reduce weight. Sweater makes sense because they're big and according to the etymology they were intended to produce sweat. Mm. However, that's not very nice to think about. No. If Americans are like, oh, we can't say toilet because that's too gross, but we can say sweater. It's yeah. Like, yeah, you don't want to think about what's going on underneath that sweater, do no. you? I mean, no. no, that's not nice. That's not nice. No. So how about a compromise? <laughs> Pull over. <laughs> yeah, we can all probably agree on that one. Yes. Mm, I don't know how I'm going to vote on this. Because jumper, I mean, even though you know that it didn't come from the verb to jump, it still doesn't make a lot of sense either, really. Not really, no. All in favour of jumper? All in favour of sweater? Yeah. No. <laughs> I still don't think I'm going to use it though. I never say sweater. Even if it makes sense. No. UK trousers, US pants. With regard to trousers, early recorded use of the word indicates the garment was regarded as Celtic. 
A jealous wife was like an Irish trouse, always close to a man's tail. Pants is short for pantaloons, a term used since the 17th century for men's nether garments. The word originated from the name of a character in the old Italian Commedia dell'arte, pantaloon, a silly old man with thin legs who encased them in tight trousers. In American English, it broadened out to trousers generally, hence the current American use of pants for trousers. Well again, schoolgirl humour. We always giggle when we hear pants because we imagine somebody, you know, just in their underwear and not actually fully clothed. In the UK, pants is like um, underwear, yeah. knickers or knickers briefs, briefs, that yeah. type of thing. In the UK, you can say, like, that's pants if something's really bad. Mm. That doesn't really make sense in American English. That's trousers. No, that doesn't, doesn't compute, does it? No. So using pants for underwear in British English gives us a nice insult. Let's hear it for pants. Trousers. UK petrol, US gas. Petrol is a shortened term for petroleum distillate. Gas is a shortened version of gasoline and was the trade name for petroleum distillate used in the US. Some may consider the word gas incorrect because it is a liquid and not a gas. Until I sort of read up on the etymology, that would have been my response. Mm. It's, it's a liquid, it's not a gas. Um, and plus it just sounds comical when Americans say they've got to get gas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can see your Imagine point. Imagine with a bit of bloating. Yeah, a bit of bloating, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you think, why do that to yourself? Yeah, don't encourage that. No. All in favour of gas. You can't raise your hand for that, you can can't, you? Yeah, <laughs> no. All in favour of petrol. UK boot, US trunk. The usage of the word trunk comes from it being the word for a large travelling chest. As such, trunks were often attached to the back of the vehicle before the development of the integrated storage compartments in the 1930s. The term boot comes from the word for a built-in compartment on a horse-drawn coach, originally used as a seat for the coachman and later for storage. I actually think the word trunk makes a lot of sense here. Like you think of it, don't you, like a big trunk for storage, mm. like a separate carrying case. I do like the word boot. I think it's quite quaint and Bung cute. it in the boot. Yes, yeah, just put this in the boot. Yeah. <laughs> All in favour of trunk. All in favour of boot. Not going to get rid of boot anytime soon, that No, is. I still say boot, but mm. I do think the word trunk, if we go with the definition of the video, makes more sense to yes. most people. So that's 7-3 to the Brits. <laughs> Undisputable. Undisputable, score yeah, exactly. By the Brits yes, there. yes. Yeah, maybe we should, as you said earlier, do a version of this with the American guys, as well as us British girls. If you've got any ideas of the words we can talk about, please let us know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like and hit subscribe to follow us on YouTube.